dystopian times. We have had multiple prominent anti-vax conservatives die from COVID-19. The first was uh, Dick Farrell. He worked for Newsmax, and that's his real name, Dick Farrell. He worked for Newsmax. He was an anti-vaxxer, got COVID, died. Then we saw Scott Apley, a prominent Republican in Texas. Anti-vax, made fun of COVID and the severity of COVID, got COVID, died. Then we had uh, Phil Valentine, was not anti-vax according to his family, but vaccine hesitant, got COVID, died. Uh, last week, Chris Johansson, who is a GOP lawmaker from the state of Maine, he and his wife are both anti-vax. His wife got COVID, died. Days later, he was attending an anti-vax rally in uh, in Maine. And we have another story in this saga, which I don't know when the, when this series is going to end. Anti-vax lawyer for dozens of Capitol rioters is now on a ventilator with COVID-19. This is from John Wright of, of uh, Ross Story. Sorry, folks. I'm not laughing like at the deaths. I'm laughing at the uh, insanity. Okay, so don't come at me, you pearl-clutching <laughs> maggot heads. Attorney John Pierce, who has represented Kenosha, Wisconsin, shooting suspect Kyle Rittenhouse, as well as more than a dozen Capitol writers, reportedly is on a ventilator after contracting COVID-19. Pierce's illness was first reported Wednesday after it prompted a hearing for accused Capitol writer Shane Jenkins to be delayed, according to to independent journalist Marcy Wheeler and Washington Post reporter Rachel Weiner. Pierce is not at this hearing. He sent the lawyer from his office who is not barred uh, in D.C. Again, Wheeler reported Mr. Pierce is in the hospital, we believe, with COVID-19 on a ventilator, non-responsive. One of the attorneys who uh, was present reportedly told a judge. Uh, so this is the question that I have to the panel. And um, I, I feel like this is kind of a rhetorical question because you're all going to have the same answer. I think, uh, how many deaths is it going to take of prominent conservatives before they actually start to take it seriously? My answer is uh, there could be a million and they're still not going to take it seriously. Farron, what's your take on this? No, I, I agree. There's there, there's no limit, you know, to pull the quote from Mean Girls. The limit does not exist. So <laughs> what we're talking about here, though, uh, this story with John Pierce, this lawyer, um, I, I get a segment coming up on it uh, tomorrow morning, actually, but I always make a point because I, I, I cover every single one of these when they happen and it's getting harder and harder to continue to talk about it. You know, some of these people, you know, I, and I always point out, listen, I, I guarantee you, I never agreed with anything this person ever stood for, anything they ever did, but I, I wouldn't want any of them to die. Aptly, like you talked about, has a infant son, like yeah. that kid, that kid doesn't have a dad now, so he'll never know his real father because of this stupid anti-vax bullshit that these people just have latched onto with this. And it, it, it is heart wrenching. You know, I, I hate this cause I look at my own kids and God, what, what would happen to them? If, if, if something had happened to me, if I was this stupid and selfish and luckily I'm not, but it's, it's, it's tough. But I always, again, I point out to people, I'm going to talk about every single one of these that happens because maybe Maybe there's one person out there that hears it that says, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get the shot. Because Valentine's family even said, because when he died Saturday, I think the family mm -hmm. issued a statement Wednesday saying that he's gonna make sure when he comes back, he is going to be more pro-vaccine for his mm -hmm. audience. Well, they never got that. They, they didn't get to hear it. They never got that opportunity. And we're not hearing anybody, by the way, on their deathbed saying, oh, thank God I didn't get the shot. No, it's always the opposite. Like, why did I do this to myself? So I use these as teachable moments. And I don't know that we're ever going to convince everybody. But if we can at least convince one or two people, maybe by talking about these stories, I'm going to continue to do it. Because even if I don't like you, even if I disagree with everything you see, you think politically, I don't want you to die, but it yeah. is getting harder and harder at this point to have empathy because you know, you, you, this is what happens. This is what happens when you're stupid and I don't want you to die, but my God, my empathy meter is running really low right now. Well, I'm a bit yeah, more I, blunt. I, you get desensitized to it. Go ahead, Dylan. I'll let you be blunt because um, be you'll, blunt. you'll say the things that I won't say and I'll live vicariously through you. 
Wonderful. So this just feels like that old, what's that old meme? I never thought the leopards would eat my face. Saw the oh, woman yeah. who voted for the leopard eating people's faces yep. party. Yeah. <laughs> who would have thought if you were able to fool yourself and all of your audiences that if you don't take the one thing that has an over 90% effectiveness rate to stop you from getting COVID, not only that, and people, people undersell this, not only does it drastically decrease the chance of you getting COVID. But if you actually do get COVID, your chances of surviving are still much, much, much higher. So it's not only that this vaccine helps stop you get COVID and it drastically increases your chances of not getting it. But then if you do catch COVID, the symptoms are most likely going to be less severe and you're most likely going to be able to walk away perfectly fine. It increases your chances dramatically. So even if you don't want to get it from the idea, well, it isn't perfect in saving me, well, then do you, don't you want a better fighting chance if you do end up getting it anyway? These are people who have perpetuated, perpetuated these lies about this vaccine. These are people whose their words have caused people not only to die from COVID, but the people who have gotten COVID, they're going to have to deal with medical complications for the rest of their lives. We yeah. see the number 600,000. That's not the only way we should wait it. Number one, we should do it on an international scale. I think we're being very American centric, but you know, we live here. I understand, but we need to think about the long-term health effects. These are at, this is having on people. And the fact that these dumb fucks would rather they that waited for so long for FDA approval waited so long. And now that we got it, they are instead going to take fucking horse medication while the <laughs> FDA begs them not to. I have empathy for human be beings, but I cannot transplant extra brain cells into your brain. Science has not given me that yet. When it does, I'll do my best to do it. So I feel for these people's families, but I mean, it's like if I saw somebody stick their dick in the toaster and then jump in a volcano. It's like I do feel for the family who just lost a family member, but we all knew what was going to happen. I, that's that's a great way to put it. That was <laughs> that was brilliant, Dylan. No, listen, I I don't when I when I see these stories, it's not like I'm oh yes, another one is going to die. Like I, I think that in the event of like uh, that they survived, like Phil Valentine, that would be wonderful because I think that them like surviving COVID after being near death and uh, promoting the vaccine, I feel like they would be more effective than if they died. So uh, Mac, don't you don't you feel like? Well, I don't even know. I don't even know how to phrase the question because I'm just exasperated at this point. Like, do you do you, do you think that being desensitized to all of this is is morally acceptable? Because I do feel desensitized. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I like 100. I get it. Like at this point, we're months into this. We've seen, like you were saying, like it's just story after story after story. It's not like this is like a one off thing. So you would hope or think that some of these people who watch like their favorite conservative commentator get sick and then potentially die or even like barely survive COVID, you would hope that like maybe that would give, be a teachable moment for them. But honestly, I, I'm not confident in that. It, we've seen the results of that. I mean, these people will shift the goalposts, um, you know, no matter what happens. And we just saw that again, like with the um, with the FDA fully approving the Pfizer vaccine. It's like, they. it was never about the FDA approval for a lot of these people. It, it, now it's just about, oh, so now you really trust the FDA. It's like, you know, we're never going to get through to a large, you know, portion of the population who are listening to these types of people. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't know how much my empathy the meter is at right now, but it's definitely decreasing as uh, time goes on. But yeah, I mean, I, I would hope there could be some teachable moments in here, but it, it just doesn't seem like there has been.